We're joined today by Matt Gaskell from Google. Uh, obviously, these guys have announced their new Pixel handsets. They've also announced the new Chromecast as well. Um, most of us that stream content to our TVs do it with a Chromecast. It's easily the most uh, successful enabler of smart device content streaming to our televisions on the planet. Google's done very well with it. But first, I thought we'd have a chat about the Pixel handsets that have been announced for this market. Uh, Matt joins us now. How, how are you, Matt? Very well. Thanks for having me. Good to um, get some insights from you today. Uh, first up, with uh, the new Pixel announcements, you've got a 4A, 5G, and then you've got a 5 as well. Can you maybe quickly just give us a, an overarching explanation of each handset and uh, what some of the key features are of both? Yeah, for sure. Thanks. So we've got the so we've got the Pixel Five coming in at the the hero end of our of our device range, and the Pixel Four A with five G. Now the Four A with five G has everything you'd expect and want in that kind of mid price range, uh, with the addition of five G. So uh, we've taken all the things that we know consumers love about Pixel devices, and we you know learnt a lot from the Pixel Three A. Uh, as to what people really expect in that kind of mid-market price point. They want a great camera, they want a great battery, they want a great display, and they're maybe not really wanting to trade off so much in terms of price against things like wireless charging or IP rating, that kind of thing. So really, uh, the foray with 5G is around delivering that 5G speed at that new price point for us. And then the Pixel 5 is where you start to see the bells and whistles that you'd usually expect in the Pixel range in that kind of slightly more premium price point. So we brought in wireless charging, metal unibody, uh, we've got a larger battery, um, and all those new features uh, that really kind of come together on the, on the higher end. Now, having said that, uh, as you pointed out earlier, like both of these devices are coming in under $1,000. And so when we look to you know, what we think consumers will do, Firstly, what we're trying to do as Google is, is really sit in the core of what we like to offer our users, which is help on us. So we're kind of living by this mantra of help per dollar, and we want to make sure that we're providing the best help per dollar for each end user. And so when you making a decision about which phone you'd like to buy, it's really you choose the hardware that best suits your purpose, and then we'll give you really consistent experiences through the software. So we deliver on both devices. We have amazing camera features. We have amazing battery features. So extreme battery saver comes on both. We have cinematic pan comes on both. Uh, night sight and portrait mode lighting comes on both. And we also maintain the update on both devices for three years. Um, so Matt, um, Pixel 4a 5G, do we get the full 5G experience that other more expensive handsets are providing us, for example, around speeds, network connectivity, for example? Yeah, for sure. And like we're using the same Qualcomm Snapdragon chipset in both devices. So you're absolutely getting the same features and functionality from a 5G perspective on both as well. Um, and it, we think it's really important. Like Australia, uh, I guess many, many people won't remember, but Australia was one of the fastest countries to move from 3G to 4G. And we're seeing investments from networks that we really think are going to drive that again with 5G. And so we really want to make sure we're, we're providing a great experience for our end users on 5G. So there's no difference between the two devices in terms of connectivity. Your um, go-to-market message really from the, from the beginning of Pixel has been the best integration of Google services into the Pixel handset. Um, there's no doubt that by enabling 5G into these handsets, you're going to have uh, an even richer Google experience with Google services on these handsets. Obviously, that's part of the goal. Absolutely. Um, and so really, we, we like to think that if you're buying a Pixel, you're kind of holding Google in the palm of your hand. And so we continue to work on experiences like Assistant, which you know, you've seen in multiple devices, and I think we'll, mm. we'll speak about Assistant and on other devices as well. Uh, Duo, which is getting a much tighter integration, so screen sharing uh, multiple uh, participants in duo calls coming through, uh, YouTube caching. So particularly with 5G, obviously, you've got um, opportunities for YouTube caching and having really rich YouTube experiences, which you know aren't going to buffer or stutter. Um, and we'll continue to work through those. I think the other thing that we're doing with Pixel is making some offers for consumers on multiple Google services. So there's uh, three months of Google One, there's three months of YouTube Premium, uh, there's Google Play Pass as well. So when you buy a Pixel device, you kind of get to dip your toe into multiple Google services and, and really feel like what it happens when you have all those services humming on the same device at 5G speeds. You have gone 
one device has got the Gorilla Glass, that's the Pixel 5, the other, the 4A with 5G does not. Is the goal there to give it um, one device more of a pre premium feel than the other? I mean, you, you're paying a couple of hundred bucks more, I guess, but is that is that sort of the design uh, goal on, on doing that? Yeah, absolutely. So we've got, you know, a similar design language, but as I said, you know, consumers will will choose which device fits their fits their you kind know, of either their pocket or their lifestyle best. So with the 4A 5G, we've gone with a plastic unibody, we've got a metal unibody uh, with the Pixel 5, we've got Gorilla Glass on the Pixel 5. And you know, it's it's really for some people a plastic uh, plastic unibody is fine. And there's a lot of a lot of plastic unibody devices out there. Others they really want to have that, you know, the kind of premium materials, Gorilla Glass, metal finish, or like kind of, you know, the the real the premium end of, of town when it comes to um, colors and materials. So that's what we're offering those two op uh, options there as well. I I see you've got the wireless charging, but I didn't see whether you've got anything, you've got water resistance. Do you have an actual um, water resistance uh, level that you're providing? Um, for example, 68, yes, 67, it's... for example? Yeah, so it was 68 on the Pixel 5. So we're, we're calling out 68 and as you say, wireless charging and reverse wireless charging. So uh, if you picked up a pair of Pixel Buds, you can wirelessly charge your Pixel Buds using your Pixel 5. Um, and, you know, obviously we're seeing more and more devices and cars uh, coming out with wireless charging as well. Mm. So you can use that on the Pixel 5 too. Good oversight on those ones, Matt. If we can go to the Google Chromecast, you've added a remote control on your new $99 Chromecast. Is one of the challenges of selling new Chromecast, the fact that so many people have already got a Chromecast? Uh, look, as you said in your introduction, um, Australians love Chromecasts and, you know, we've, we've been selling them for a number of years. And and I think that really what's happened is the Chromecast, uh, whilst it's still a great device, the landscape that it's operating in has really changed. So, you know, if you think about 2014 when we first launched Chromecast, it was really, you know, YouTube and then we had Netflix came along and then Stan um, and then, you know, KO. And so we've seen mm. this kind of multiple apps being delivered and it's getting really harder and harder for certainly for me to find the shows that I want to watch and to organize mm. them and to work out where they are. Uh, and so I think there was always uh, some demand for a, a device with remote control, but I think at least from my, my personal experience and my point of view, it's about there's such a wealth of content on such a wealth of different places. Now you really do need help to try and organize it all into one place. And so having this UI where you can have all your apps, uh, you know, as I said, Stan, Disney+, Plus, Netflix, Amazon Prime, YouTube, all these apps in the same place, make them really easily discoverable, just makes that whole kind of sitting down and watching TV process, which, you know, was very easy for a long time. You just chose one of four channels and away you mm. went. Uh, and then it's kind, of, it's kind of exploded out. And then we're trying to use Assistant to kind of bring that back in again. So when someone says to you, uh, you know, and you, you'll see it in our, in our, in our creative when someone says to you, oh, you should watch this show, you don't need to go home and then kind of spend half an hour working out which service it's on and how to find it. Um, we can do that heavy lifting for you and you just need to sit down and, and ask your TV to play it. Um, so, you know, we're, we're really happy with the way Chromecast is performing and we think, well, you know, there'll, there'll be a space for Chromecast for some time. But, um, yeah, just, just the way that users are, are starting to interact with content um, and the, the power that Google, we think we can deliver using Assistant to help that process uh, means that you know we we think it's the right time for this device and this this Google TV interface that'll help people navigate their content. So we're we're really excited about it, um, and yeah, looking forward to see what Australians uh, do with it. I think they're going to respond quite favourably. The interesting thing is with, with it as well. And I know we don't have much time left, but the question I want to ask is: Do I get to choose what apps uh, added to the UI, or is that placed and fixed uh, for my experience? Yeah, there'll, there'll be some that will kind of come fixed in the experience, then you basically can load any any um, Google TV compatible app on there. So uh, there'll be the, from launch, the compatibility will be, you know, all the big players you'd expect and then the mm. local players, so ABC, SBS, you can use those as well. And then you can, you can you know, modify your UI as you see fit. But yeah, we're, we're really hoping that, uh, as I say, we've got a lot of, of Chromecast users in Australia and we're really looking forward to delivering this new experience to them. We think it's gonna be really, really compelling. Is the addition, of the remote control, does that now mean that even if you've got a $99 smartphone, for example, be it a $99 Android phone, you can still have a good Chromecast experience because you're not streaming from the device anymore. You're just self-contained on the Chromecast, enjoying your streaming experience. 
Yeah, exactly. And we uh, we we run those those media streams via our servers, um, mm. but it does mean that with the remote control, it's easier to find, use your voice, uh, and obviously you've got now sixty frames per second, four K, so you've got really high video, uh, all, all the things you want to want to enjoy for a, a top notch movie night, um, including the ease of finding the movie in the first place. Um, now all comes <laughs> in the same place. So yeah, it really it, it really delivers that experience to you, irrespective of what phone you have. Um, and even what TV you have, you you might have a great TV that's just a mm. dumb TV from ten years ago, um, and that's the thing I think people really like about Chromecast is it, it's been turning these dumb TVs into smart TVs for years, um, and now we can make them even smarter again. And it's affordable. Ninety nine dollars will be the price for the new Chromecast. Um, Seven ninety nine for the Pixel Four A five G. Nine ninety nine for the Pixel Five. Matt, thanks for your time today. Thanks for taking us through the insights on your new products. Appreciate your time. No, thank you so much. Great to speak to you.